serving as a Democrat. Um, my question to you is, what's your biggest issue with President Biden's leadership? Uh, the censorship, the war, and putting neocons, you know, war-mongering neocons in front of our, in, in charge of our foreign policy, and putting Wall Street in charge of our domestic policy and our economy. So what would you do differently? I would do everything differently. I would negotiate with the Russians, which is what they've wanted to do from, from day one. The Russians signed a peace agreement in March of 2022, which we just found out about, and Zelensky initialed it. And the Russians were actually withdrawing their troops in March of 2022 and April of 2022, and President Biden sent Boris Johnson to Kiev to blow up that agreement. And since then, 135,000 kids, Ukrainian kids have died, and 50,000 Russian kids. My son went over to Ukraine, to Ukraine and fought in the Kharkiv offensive. He was a machine gunner in a special forces unit. And so, you know, I'm deeply concerned with the welfare of the people in Ukraine. I admire their valor. Uh, they died unnecessarily to fulfill an ambition of the United States which was to use Ukraine in a proxy war with Russia. In fact, when President Biden was asked about what the purpose of the war was, he said regime change in Russia. When Lloyd Austin, his Secretary of Defense, was asked in April 2022, right after they blew up the agreement, why are we in Ukraine, he said to exhaust the Russian army and degrade its capacity to fight anywhere else in the world. That is not about Ukrainian freedom. It is about using Ukraine in a proxy war, in a geopolitical dispute between two great powers. So are you saying that it's the United States' fault that Russia invaded Ukraine? No, I, no, I'm not. Vladimir, I'm not making any excuse for Vladimir Putin. His, his invasion was illegal, it was brutal, and he had other options. But did we deliberately provoke the action? Yes, we did. Again and again and again, we would not allow Zelensky to sign the Minsk Accords in 2019. Zelensky ran as the peace candidate. He was a, he's a comedian. He's an actor, which I'm not disparaging because that's what my wife does, but he had never been in politics. And he, but he won with 70% of the vote. Why? Because he ran promising that he would sign the Minsk Accords, which were already agreed to by Russia, by France, and by Germany. And then the United States, we, our White House, went over there and we would not let him sign. If we had let him sign, this war would have never happened and all those kids would be alive today. So there were two different Minsk accords and you talked in the past about how you would use that as a structure for having peace. But obviously it wasn't able to prevent the war initially. I'm just wondering, why do you think that another, that the Minsk accords would be able to stop I, this war? I, I don't, I'm not arguing that the Minsk accords today would still work. I don't think the Russians um, would agree to the Minsk Accords today, but the Minsk Accords didn't work before because we wouldn't let them work. The Russians were going to let them work. Germany was going to. France and and and, uh, and Zelensky was going to. So uh, they worked for everybody except for the neocons in the White House who wanted this war. What's your path to peace, sir? What would you do to end this war? I would negotiate with the Russians. What would that include? Well, I, I wouldn't tell you. You're, uh, you. You keep asking me questions that it would be crazy for me to answer. You never. I, I negotiate for a living. I've settled hundreds of lawsuits. You never tell them what you're going to negotiate for before you negotiate. So I would say my answer to that is strategic ambiguity. Mr. Yeah, I, I would love to go to Ukraine. Mr. Kennedy, our president says we're closer to nuclear war now than ever before since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Would you support a policy of no first use of nukes? Yeah, well, I, I would, but I, here's the thing. What you're saying is really important because the Russian group, we are provoking, not only have we made the worst geopolitical mistake, which is to push the Russians into an embrace of China, which is the worst geopolitical outcome that we can, we can imagine. We've essentially fueled the creation of BRICS, where 40 nations are now threatening to get off of, of the dollar as the, as the world reserve currency. If that continues, 
then, you know, what, that will make the Great Depression look like a cakewalk for us. Uh, but the Russians also, most importantly, have more nukes than we do. They have at least a thousand more nuclear weapons than we do, and they, and many people argue that their weapons are much better than ours. That they have any ballistic weapons that actually work, that will stop incoming uh, missiles from hitting Russia, and we, and that ours are much inferior. So why are we getting, why are we provoking a war with the big, with a nuclear superpower? Why are we settling this from the beginning?